um, I have always been uh, very impressed with. And he has a lot of things going on. Um, I just want to let you know I'm outside trying to get out the house. So my neighbors across the street, they are doing it up with 80s and 90s music. So if you hear them, um, we're all trying to get outside. But I have with me a special guest, Duncan Kirkwood. Duncan is a phenomenal, he's a speaker, he's a trainer, he's a community advocate, um, and Duncan and I have worked together uh, for a while. We have a couple of upcoming um, projects that um, I'll be excited to announce once, once they're announced and finalized that we'll be serving together um, to make the community better. But uh, I have him here with me to talk about his new book, um, Resilience. And so Duncan's going to give us a little bit of background um, and we're gonna jump right in. So Duncan, welcome. Thank you for being here and thank you for getting us set up in, in the live um, and for being so patient with me. How are you today? I'm doing well. And um, you know, I wanna first thank you for those other projects that we're working on. It's gonna be a big asset to the community. And I wanna just thank you for this group. You know, uh, when I reached out, I just knew this would be a great platform because the people in this group are people who wanna go get it. Like people, and this isn't just like another Facebook group, people post random stuff. People in here are really working on things. I see, I check the group all the time. I see people doing great stuff. And it's just like, yes, a, a culture and a support system of go-getters. Because it can be lonely when you're out trying to create something that doesn't exist or trying to build a life that wasn't given to you. You know, a lot of us haven't been given this to us by our parents, we had to go make it, we had to go create it. And so being in a community of other folks, you know, uh, is very helpful and it gives you that, that momentum sometimes. Like when I see other people doing it, I'm like, man, um, you know, this is great. Motivating. Uh, it gives me motivation. I just got a notification that says it wasn't able to stream live on Facebook, uh, but I'm recording it, so it's okay. Okay. so we'll. We'll put it on in the group after after we get it done. So whatever, resilience. My line name was intrepid, and that means that it, and it's resilience in the definition. So we're not gonna give up. So um, so Duncan, and you're right. The group, the AMR group. Um, thank you for being a part of it. And I wanted to create a community uh, like that where people could be one motivated, but also feel like they were comfortable in a space of other go getters. Sometimes, um, let's face it, because everybody's not as tenacious. Um, as we sometimes are, right? And that could be really, really lonely. And I wanted to create a group where we have other people and be motivated and then sometimes in turn serve as motivation. But um, enough about, about the group, but tell me a little bit about yourself. Give me a little bit about your background. Oh uh, yeah, so I'm from Buffalo, born and raised here. Uh, I went down south for college. I went to a historically black college in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, there I got my bachelor's degree, uh, went on to get my master's degree. Um, and then I served in military for eight years. And then I returned to Buffalo in 2015 to get married. And, you know, just been doing some, a lot of educational equity and social justice work, um, you know, since then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, tell me about the book. The book title is Resilience, right? No, the book title is Rerouting. I'm sorry, it's rerouting. Oh. Yep, yeah, looking right at it. The book title is rerouting, but it, it's about resilience. And tell me how you came up with the title, and and why you decided to write on this topic. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I'm sorry. I'm just trying to re, um, <laughs> re get us on Facebook as as I'm talking here. But so the title, it really means a lot to me because I use this quote in a lot of my speeches that I do is that I tell people, I said, you should live your life like a GPS. Uh, you know, when things are not going well, when, when we're challenged with stuff, we wanna live our life like a GPS. Cause when you put a GPS, a destination in that GPS and you're navigating through traffic and you're trying to get to your destination, if there's a roadblock or you take a wrong turn or something happens that causes you to get off of the path, the GPS doesn't get sad, doesn't break down. It just says rerouting. And so really, I wanted to, to capture that theme that like when you have setbacks in life, you don't have to break down. You don't have to, you can choose to just continue forward and you just reroute as you go. So the title of the book is Resilience Tools and Tactics. I mean, excuse me, it's Rerouting Resilience Tools and Tactics. I love that. And, and that's really applicable, right, in, in, in your career, right? But it's also mm -hmm. applicable in personal life, friendship, relationships. Um, 
interpersonal relationships. So I, I like that idea that the GPS, you know, it, it doesn't get mad. It doesn't start crying. Although I feel like, um, and I just got a notification that we are live on Facebook. I don't know if that makes, that's the first time I saw the notification. So uh, <laughs> I think that means something, but, um, you know, you it just rerouting and, and I love it because when you were describing it, I'm looking or picturing having my GPS and me making a wrong turn and the rerouting and it's like dot, dot, dot. And you might have to wait a couple minutes, but rest assured, you know that the GPS is going to come up with an, an alternate route for you to get back on track. So, um, so once again, we're live. Duncan, I'm going to reintroduce you. We had some tech trouble. I was supposed to be live at 830, so we're only about 20 minutes late, but um, Duncan got us on and we're in the Attract Manifest Repeat group. Um, I'm welcoming author, community activist, speaker, trainer, Duncan Kirkwood um, into the group. And before you guys got here and before we were on live, Duncan made some wonderful comments about the Attract Manifest Repeat group. And he was saying how um, pleased he is and how honored he is to be a part of the group because it's motivational to see the amount of go-getters that we have in this group. And, and I'm proud um, as the organizer for the group to really have this group of people um and i'll be honest at first when i did it i did it for women but we've sort of opened it up to the guys too so it's nice to have have you in and um duncan is like i said an author speaker trainer community activist um he he does a lot in the community and i um, so happy to have him on and his new venture is a book called rerouting and so Duncan was telling us a little bit about that. And, and Duncan, if you could go in again and talk about the idea about where you came up with the name, the GPS, because I thought that was profound. Yeah. And so I'll just re repeat, uh, you know, since we're live now about the group, you know, a lot of times people in our community, you can react to somebody doing better than you or live in their purpose in two ways, right? You could be jealous. You can have some sort of negativity where you compare yourself to them and they're doing this and you're not. So you feel angst. Or you could see it as motivation, like, hey, that person looks like me, and they're doing it, so I can do it too. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like that this group really plays on the positive energy around people doing well. Uh, as far as the book, like I said, I uh, was giving a speech one time at this college's graduation commencement ceremony, and I said to the folks, I said, live your life like a GPS. And I just, it just, uh, when I was writing it, it just really, I felt it. And when I said it, other people felt it because it was like everybody could relate to like plugging a destination in the GPS and there's a roadblock or there's a detour or you missed the exit because you weren't paying attention. But the GPS, it doesn't change its voice inflection. The GPS doesn't change the destination. It doesn't start posting on social media that you messed up. It just says rerouting. Right. All it says is rerouting and it charts a new course to get to your destination, but it just keeps you moving forward. And so that's really where I drew the inspiration for the title, uh, Rerouting Resilience Tools and Tactics, uh, because I think that that's just a great way to look at setbacks, that you just, it happens, you learn, and then you just find a new path to move forward. Mm -hmm. So tell me, when you, when you, in the book, do you go into sharing any of personal setbacks that you've experienced and how you reroute it and, and where it took you and how you felt through that process? Absolutely. So, you know, in the book, I share a lot about my personal journey because what I didn't want to do is seem preachy or teachy where it's like, here's all this information. Good luck. You know, go be resilient. I wanted to kind of have people go through a feeling and a journey of what it feels like in the moment, like how you can change your thinking and become more resilient in a moment. Like, what does that actually look like? And so I share sometimes where I wasn't resilient, sometimes where I was resilient, sometimes I had setbacks and how I had to change my thinking, uh, whether it was not winning the election that I ran for office or whether it was not getting accepted into my first choice in college or changing my major. Like all the things that I've had to go through, I try to connect real stories and experiences to the material so people can feel it. And they say, oh yeah, yeah, I had something like that happen. Or, oh, I get it, that makes sense. Cause it's real, it's authentic. And that's one of the things that um, I admire most about you is, is your ability to connect um, to a, a variety of people and your, your willingness to share those type of things. And, and there is an authenticity when we do that and we share our, our setbacks and our obstacles, right? I, I don't particularly connect with people who um, 
I mean, I, I guess the, the best way to say, I'm trying to think of a politically correct way to say it, but those people who have had no setbacks, those people who have been given everything, those people who really haven't had to be resilient, I don't connect with them. I'm not knocking, you know, their, their path, that's their journey, but, but I don't connect, right? So I, I love that in, I, in, in the book and the parts that I, that I read, I love that about you because you are authentic and you are um, sharing that and willing to share that. And I think that's, that says a lot about you. Can you go into a little bit more detail and, and talk about the themes because there's different themes in the book right like I said before we went live the idea of rerouting the idea of living your life as a GPS we can apply that in our professional lives but we can also apply that in our personal lives I mean we can apply it in every part of our lives right so if you could share a little bit more that would be great yeah so you know the when I was in the military it was part of my job was to train soldiers to be more resilient so the military has like a very matter-of-fact way that they teach resilience. It was part of their initiative to combat veteran depression and veteran suicide. They trained officers to go be master resilience trainers. So I was one of those. But when I got out of the military, I knew that there was something missing from that training. Like it was great training, like incredible. But the real resilience I learned from like a lot of professional development from like Eckhart Tolle, uh, P.D. Ospensky, uh, Robert Greene, uh, Nikolai Machiavelli. Like a lot of the, the resilience I learned there was about finding your purpose. Um, and knowing, like, if you're purposeful in a purpose-driven life, Oprah calls it in flow. Oprah says you're either in flow or you're not, right? So if you're in flow, setbacks don't, don't hit you the same as they do when you're out of flow, right? So having a, a purpose-driven life is part of being resilient, but that wasn't part of the military training. Then I learned about how our perception of time is off, past, present, and future, and how we've been indoctrinated with this way to think about the past and the future and how that's destructive and erodes our resilience a lot of times because we're not present. And mm -hmm. so I took that and then I learned about your ego and I have had a big ego my whole life, right? So I had to like learn about like your ego and how it's supposed to work versus how we allow it to work. And mm -hmm. I took all of that professional development, all that research and training and I brought it down from being so esoteric, so in the cloud, super earthy and made it something that the everyday person who goes to work as a parent, as a grandparent, as a young person can just read it and digest it. And they can actually use some of that, those skills to go, you know, put into, uh, put into their lives to become more resilient because we all have setbacks. Every person has setbacks and it's like, you know, people try to make it look like they don't on social media, like their life is perfect. And, you know, but we all have setbacks every day, but the difference is how we react to those setbacks. And so this book is hopefully getting people the tools to start to understand that those setbacks don't break you. They don't have to cripple you. They can just be a learning experience and you keep moving forward. Uh, and actually, you actually learn more from setbacks than you do from successes anyway. But um, so I tried to condense that all. So some of the themes, back to your original question, are how to deal with your ego, knowing who you are. Most people don't know who they are. Like, that's just a real thing. I didn't know who I was. When they, when the first time somebody asked me, they said, you know, when I was doing professional development, they said, Duncan, write down who you are. So I wrote down, I'm a master's degree educated person. I'm a army veteran. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm this, I'm that. I'm a good person. I'm an activist. I'm, you know, all of these titles and roles, right? Right. But none of that is who you are. Like, absolutely. None. Like, those things are important. Those things have value right? They, 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 they let you contribute to society, but who you are is so much more. It's like the deepest part of the uncharted part of the ocean. Like who we are is so much more. So I didn't know that, right? So one of the big themes is learning who you are. Another theme is about presence, truly understanding what it means to be present and the freedom and liberation that comes with being present. Um, then there are concrete tools of thinking patterns, how to avoid thinking traps, because a lot of times we get caught up in thinking traps. Um, and so how to avoid uh, a lot of those different types of thinking traps, we talk about that and building positive thinking patterns, checking your circle, understanding who's around you. Like one of the things in the book um, I say is a lot of times we'll judge who's our friends or who's important to us by saying, who's going to be there if we get in trouble, right? Who's the person who I'm going to call when I'm, the, the police pull me over or, you know, all goes bad, who do I call, right? That's how we judge like our close friendship a lot of time. Like that's the, the benchmark but that's a terrible way to judge it, wow. right? So what, what, I, what, we, what I learned in my development was, what I tell people is, ask yourself, when you have the greatest news ever, 
he said he proposed to you, you got that promotion, who do you call then? Because that's a different person. That's a, it's a different person who you call when you have good news because you'll call us the right the one person and they'll start having doubt. Well, what about this? Or can you really move back to Buffalo? Can you really do this? They instantly their mind goes to doubt or questioning or whatever. But then there's that other person you call, they're screaming on the phone, they're, they're more excited than you. So by the end of the call, you are reliving the whole experience of excitement and joy all over again because they're more they're so excited for you and they're so you know in support it's so interesting that you put it that way because even in that moment i thought about you know if i'm in the trenches hoodie on you know about to do something who do i want to be my co-defendant right that's Mm -hmm. not the same person that i'm going to call like you said when something big happens that's not the the same person and and for very um for very different reasons the person i'm going to call um you know, like you said, when I'm in the trenches and I need them, they're going to be there to bail me out. They're not the person, the, the person that I would call um, if something wonderful happened because that person is going to speak sense. That person speaks life into me. That person is going to actually stop me from probably doing what it is that I'm going to do. So that's so interesting how you, you put that. And I, I could picture that perspective. Those are two different people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so you want to build your circle with the person who you're calling with the great news. Yeah. That's yeah. the circle that's going to hold you accountable to your goals. That's the circle that's going to take the time to understand what you need and support you, right? And that's the the group that you want to put around you to be pouring into you, right? Resilience, a lot of resilience is the people that you put around you, the connections that you make. You know, I tell people, I say, if you think of any memory that you have in your life, the greatest memories that you have in your whole life, any, like if you, if I say name the last five amazing moments of your life, guess what? All five of those moments, there was somebody else with you. Right. So having the right people around you matters to your resilience and it matters to how you're going to grow as a person. Right. I agree with that. I agree with that. So um, talk a little bit more um, to me about right now, everything that we're going into, uh, going through, you know, I don't need to go over it. We know we're we're stuck in a house. I'm sitting here on the porch just because I'm trying to get out the house. Um, But why is resilience so important now? And um, I guess it's a two-part question. You know, I have my, my other half here sitting here with me. Um, he's enjoying a cigar, but he's a philosopher. I'm really not. But I guess there'd be a school of thought that says that not everybody is built for resilience. Could someone read your book and build the skills that they need going through this crisis to, to, to really use resilience and to become resilient? So the first thing, I answer your second question first, mm-hmm. which is resilience is a skill. And just like any other skill, any person can learn to become resilient. This is not something that you're either born resilient or you're not. Any person, anybody can learn to, it's like a muscle. You can just grow it, you work on it, you develop it, and you'll learn to be more resilient. So if somebody is resilient, they can learn to be more resilient. If somebody's not resilient, they can learn to become resilient. Uh, so that I want to make sure that people understand that because a lot of people feel that victim mentality. They, they own that it had never nothing good can ever happen to them, right? I write about this in the book about, that's a thinking trap, yeah. right? So that's one of the thinking traps that I teach people in the book. I talk about how to avoid it. It's like me, 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 that I'm the cause of every problem in my life. No, I can't do right. Nothing good ever happens for me, right? That's a thinking trap. And uh, most times with thinking traps, you're missing evidence in that conclusion, but it erodes your resilience when you feel hopeless or powerless, right? So uh, that's it. I wrote about that in there too. But like I said, anybody can learn to be resilient. Back to your first question about the pandemic and we're shelter at home. Listen, I want to be clear. This is a tragedy. So a lot is a national, is a, a worldwide tragedy. People are actually losing their life, and I don't want to diminish that. But I want to be clear that in this moment right now, there is opportunity for you to be happier than you ever been to achieve the goals that you never had. I mean, look at, instead of saying, man, I'm stuck in the house, I'm stuck with my family, all work stuff is shut down, conferences and meetings are shut down. Think of the other way. I always wanted to learn a language and I never had time. I always wanted to write a book and I never had the opportunity. I wanted to be a better wife and I never had the time to really get back to spending all that time with my family, right? All those things, all of a sudden, you have the opportunity now if you focus on it to be the greatest version of yourself, right? All of a sudden, all the social media stuff has gotten a lot less serious outside of the pandemic stuff and the, you know, black violence, violence against black stuff like that. But I mean, just in general, people are softening. 
right? They're, spend, they're, they're forced to spend time with their kids, with their families, learn how they're learning, you know, be there for each other, take up more crafts, learn. I mean, it's just, it, if, you look, if you choose to focus on it in a positive way, this is an incredible time. When is the time in our, in our entire life where they said, you get three months of extra life with the people that you care about? Right. 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 And so shifting how you're looking at it, instead of looking at it as a punishment, look at it as an opportunity to, you know, and fill in the blank how, according to how it fits you. Right. And so I tell people to be present. So we have this idea. So, so ha, we got a whole bunch of people that's holding on to what the world used to be. Right. So before COVID, this is what the world was. And we need to bring that back. We need to get that. We, we, done, we, we working real hard to get that back. That world don't exist no more. Let that go. Right. All right, but then we got some other people saying, okay, we just got to get through another month or two, you know, by the fall, life will go back to this or that, or I'll be happy once. Co no, that's imaginary. We don't know. This could go on for the next year and a half before they get a vaccination, it's right? Not being in the presence, like you said, it's not being present. Just be right here. Yeah. I just, I, and I, that's, it's hard to explain what it feels like to be present to people. So the way I explain it in the book is I say, imagine when you was on, when you were on the beach, you were on the beach, your feet are in the sand, it's hot. You walk towards where the sand gets dark, right where it's like a little wet still, and your feet kind of sink into that sand. Then the water rushes across your ankles, and then you look out in the water, all you see is the sun beating off the water. For one moment, you are totally present. You're not thinking about your bills, you're not thinking about your ex, what somebody said about you on social media. In that moment, you just are existing, and it's beautiful, and it's peaceful, and it's just serene, right? And then after like five, 10 minutes, you know, somebody calls you, you got to go buy a beach chair, people are hungry, right? Then you kind of get pulled back into like the hustle and bustle of life. But for that moment, you felt that peace. If you work and practice, you can feel that peace every day. You can have that joy in that moment of total existence and presence every day. And that, that goes back to who you, um, you know, surround yourself with just to share personal experience. And, and I, I, it's a blessing. I learned so much and it was a place in my life. Um, but my previous job in city government, it was very hard for me to be present, right? I was always stressed. I'm worrying about what's going on. And, um, it, and it was, it was almost like complete chaos, even in my mind when I was at home, because not only was I thinking about, well, how did the day go, but what is tomorrow going to look like? And what about next week? Right. Mm -hmm. And then in and, and my new, my new position, which is a blessing, my boss, is um, extremely into mindfulness. She's very much about being present right here. And one thing that I found is that I'm doing a better job because I'm able to focus on the now. I'm not worried about what's going on later on. Of course, you know, it's there, it's gonna be on the schedule, I can see it. But right now I'm gonna focus on this meeting. I'm gonna focus on talking to you, right? And I'm, uh, I'm able to be here and give myself fully. So. I, I feel blessed that I have a boss that I can actually teach that, but it's something you have to learn to practice. Cause when I first got there, it was like, I was sort of all over the place, but um, talk to me, you mentioned a little bit earlier, which I was really impressed. And I think that's another reason why you and I connect. Um, even though I joke all the time, uh, Junkin calls me, ma'am, I was enlisted. And <laughs> for those military people, you know, us enlisted people had a problem with that, but you and I have a military background and, and resilience is, um, is, is something that's important when you're active duty. Um, and, and, and there's different nuanced ways that they teach you in the military. But so you mentioned training in the military, but talk to me about some of the other organizations where you've done this type of training and what type of organization would be a good candidate to have you come in uh, to be a trainer. Yes, thank you. Um, so yeah, the military, it, it is its own entity. Um, but it's a great place to really learn about, you know, resilience, you know, the worry the I think I, I put it in the back of my book. I put some poems, some motivational poems. One of them I put in there was the Soldier's Creed. And in it, I pulled out the warrior ethos, right? Because those ethos, I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will always place the mission first. I'll never, like, those are powerful sentiments that can transcend military and you can apply them to your life. It's like that. Stop you right there. How did they teach those things? Because we have a Sailor's Creed, right? U.S. Navy, you are Army. We have a Sailor's Creed, right? How do they teach us to us in boot camp where we're doing nothing like boot camp is the most present, you know, you probably are going to be in your entire life because you've got nothing else going on. There's no such thing as going home from work or going home um, to work. You, you're, you're, you're living boot camp. But 
over and over and over again, um, and I hate to use the word indoctrination, but we said the Sailor's Creed until we learned it, right? And then we said it until the way we felt it. And then, you know, and it's like a, a crescendo up until the end where you're finally ready to graduate and be called for us a sailor, for you a soldier. But you keep saying it, right? It wasn't like the first time I learned the Sailor's Creed or that I could say it all the way through that I felt it, I really knew it, it was just about memorization. But then I, I learned it. But I want, I want to talk to you about that because it's something you can learn and those, those things you pull out, you really begin to feel them and then you begin to live them, right? Yeah, and it's like all, I'm not gonna say, all most motivational speakers, philosophers will say, you need to visualize your goal, right? Put it somewhere where you can see it every day, say it every chance you get, write it down every chance you get. So it just kind of becomes part of you, right? So that's like a real scientific way because you gotta, <laughs> A, a lot of times, and I, I'm going to get back to your question of what organizations like I've done training for, but like a lot of times we feel when we say I, when I say I want this, right, there's more than one I inside me. There's the, there's the Duncan when I'm happy, there's the Duncan when I'm inspired, the Duncan when I'm hurt, the Duncan when I'm motivated, then there's the emotions that come with each of those eyes, which are very different, right? And so... If you don't, if you're not bringing all your centers towards that goal, every chance you get, it won't root. And that's when the cross current to life, like we've all had the time where we've had great ideas. We thought it through. We're going to go back to school. We're going to do this. And we just, it's, it's, we feeling it. And as soon as life, something happens in life that our kid got a bad grade on their test or, you know, you know, we got a bad email from somebody and boom, all the energy from that goal we had is gone. It's pushed to the bottom of the to-do list. And it keeps getting pushed until it's just a memory and that we never get to it, right? So it's just important to build that muscle memory around you following your goals. Mm -hmm. um, so I've already, uh, since I released the book in March, I've been doing like so a lot of virtual training, obviously, because of COVID. So the Democrats for Education Reform, they have a Leaders of Colors initiative across the state of New York. And so I've been doing training with them around how to be resilient as it relates to social justice work and educational justice work. Uh, I did a three-day training for some students in the Buffalo or the New York State STEM program. Mm -hmm. um, and so, or it's not STEM, I'm sorry, oof, STEP program, okay. uh, which, which I was a part of when I was younger, actually. So my mom was real happy about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I did a three-day training for them. And they'll have some dynamic young leaders. Oh, yeah. Uh, through the Urban League, I've been doing a weekly resilience training with their after-school advantage program for their high school teens. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be doing another one for the young youth not youth, but young nonprofit leadership conference uh, here in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's going to be in June. I did a conference uh, on resilience with Miss Universe and Miss USA uh, that was sponsored by the Youth Foundation. They did a three-day conference, and I did a training on resilience and persistence and social movements. So, you know, it's like it's for everybody and anybody because, again, if you – when people think of resilience, because I've been to some resilience training since I've kind of gotten to this work, and they're just these kind of standard, you know, PowerPoints and do this, be happy, be optimistic. And it's very kind of Monday. I am cutting through all of that. So we got the concrete tools. We got to give you those. But then there are some very deep, metaphysical, mindful, like really thought changing. Like you have to change your thinking patterns, mm -hmm. right? And so my book, the training really begins that process. Now, if somebody is serious and they, they're like, you know what, I'm ready for that life transformation. I'm ready for that next level. Then there are more books and trainings that dive way deeper, right? So mine is just for the average person to scratch the surface, open up their eyes, open up their mind to understanding that there is more. Right. Like a lot of people think like, this is it. Like, oh, she got her PhD. He got his law degree. He's so amazing and I'm not wrong like in the grand scheme of existence we are all like connected to something great whether you believe in god the universe whatever you want to call it there is something Im immensely powerful and special about us you know and i i just if i just at the whole time i was doing all this you know personal development I, as everything i read i'm like why don't more people know this and i'll just read some more and i'm like why don't more, like why is nobody talking about this why are they teaching people this? like if people knew this they would just be so much more happy um, and it's like, again, they're detailed concepts, but I try to break them down, Crystal, in a way that like, so, so I, like one of the trainings I talk about when we're talking about ego and your titles, people are like, well, I am a mother or I am a PhD or I, you know, and I said, okay, let's imagine a tree. 
right? So they're the same aliveness that you feel in your hand, a tree has running through it, right? There's like an aliveness, okay? It's like the living energy, right? Mm -hmm. So if we said that tree, we tell that tree, we from now on, we're going to call that tree chair. We're going to call it chair, president chair. We're going to give it some awards. We're going to put some fancy clothes, real expensive shoes in front of the tree. Did we fundamentally change anything about that tree's existence? No, not, not one bit. And I said, the same is true with us. We can have all the fancy clothes, all the titles, all the roles, whatever, but the existence that we have is not changed by external things. Right. And so I what- I call it our essence, you know? Yes. And, yeah, and, um, and that's so very true. Whether I have on sweats and a hoodie or whether I'm dressed up in the suits, there's still a crystal, the essence of me, no matter what, what that is. So it, it, talk to me about two things. So the people in the group, if they wanted to buy your book, where can they get the book? And then if we wanted to hire you, um, cause I'm gonna put it out there, even though the Attract Manifest retreat, repeat retreat is not gonna be in person this year, it's gonna be virtual. So I'd love for you to do a workshop on resilience for the attendees. Um, so I'm gonna put that out there now, but how could someone hire you and where can they get your book from? So both of those answers are the same. They can just, they can, my speaker request form or trainer request form is on my website. The book is on the website and it's just my name, DuncanKirkwood.com, uh, DuncanKirkwood.com. And they can just go there. All the information is there. It's bright, colorful, full of good energy. I spent weeks making it. So please go check it out, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, um, I would love for people to go get the book. It's, you know, it's, it's very near and dear to me. It's like, you know, they, say, they say writing a book is like giving birth. And I thought that was a, a gross exaggeration before I did it. But now I'm like, yeah, I, I get what I see the analogy now because it's I see the analogy because you don't know what birth is about. But, you know, but you kind of <laughs> get the analogy. I'm going to give you that. So <laughs> after we get off, make sure you go in the group, post a picture of the book and your website so everybody can get to you. Uh -huh. um, and so thank you for being um, with me tonight. Thank you for the technical challenges. I'm glad that you and I were resilient enough to make sure we got it in the group. Uh, for everybody to see, DuncanKirkwood.com, everyone, and his book is rerouting. Duncan, thank you for being with me tonight. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, you have a good evening. You too.